Welcome back. We are talking about your life, your promotion, where you're headed, and it will require loyalty. All this week, we're going to talk about the principles of loyalty. We just mentioned, Drenda, about David and being promoted to the king. And we need to understand, here's the question, can God trust you? Can God trust you? This is loyalty. Can you be trusted with a trust? Can God trust you with an assignment? Can he trust you with, as we've said, correction? Mm -hmm. All right. Can he trust you not to get offended? Can you receive correction? Can he trust you to keep your heart? You know, Joseph's story, remember? Tempted to go into adultery with Potiphar's wife, but he ran. He was trusted in that situation, which meant he would be trusted later. So can you trust, can you keep your heart? Can you keep your heart? Number four is, can God trust you to serve others, not be selfish? Because mm. your assignment involves people yes, and it it's going to be others. And number five I have listed, can God trust you to keep your mind clean and thoughts right? And James chapter 127 says, religion that our God, our Father accepts is pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Mm, yes. You know, we think, well, this won't hurt, this little bit of this and that, but no, you're polluting yourself and it's going to affect your life. So mm -hmm. can God trust us, Trina? That's, that's, that's a why vital question. I'm so question. thankful for the Holy Spirit because as we start to drift away, mm -hmm. God's correction out of love will bring us Praise back. Praise God for that. Yes, where we, we need, need that. To be. And then he'll give us that careful instruction again. Really just like training our own children. Yes, you know? right. They exactly. start to veer off. We have to pull them back on and re-instruct them how to do this thing and how to do it right. That's right. And so we have a story, Gary, of a couple who found that out firsthand. Mm. Uh, Kel and Carla Nelson, she was healed from an incredible uh, life-threatening cancer. And we wanted to share that story with you. Let's take a look at that now. We um, found out about Faith Life Church through a friend who brought us some CDs mm -hmm. of Gary's teaching. We had never heard any teaching quite like it. And so we decided we needed to find out more. So we just started getting some more books and CDs and listening to it over and over. He would get angry when he would True listen story. to it because he would say, they're, they're keeping something back. There's a, there's a secret to this that we're not, that he's not telling us. And I was like, no, he's telling you everything. And finally the Lord revealed to him that the key is the Holy Spirit, listening to the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's what Gary was saying, but he couldn't hear it. Finally kind of got on the same page and started digging in, watching online. And- Became partners. We came to, we live partners. in South Carolina, so we came up, we drove up with our five kids a few times to come to services here. Then we started coming to provision conferences. I started having a lot of physical problems, and in April of 2019, I ended up in the hospital the weekend of provision. Um, was diagnosed with a high-grade uterine cancer. Uh, found out later it was cervical and uterine. That was sort of, I guess, the beginning of when we knew if I was gonna live, we had to apply these principles now. It was the moment where we kept saying, this is where the rubber meets the road. We've been hearing the teaching, but now we have to apply it like never before. We had heard for years about the stories from the church of the children that came back to life or the businesses or marriages that were renewed. And everything had, the thing in common was the kingdom understanding. So we decided that if it worked for them, it would work for us. And we were just determined in that. We were to the point where we had nothing left. There was nothing but an opportunity to apply this to our lives specifically to sustain hers. And finally, he just came out with this, like out of nowhere, it wasn't out of nowhere, but I mean, he said, this is a lie. We do not accept this. This is not our truth. And it was like peace just washed over me because I felt very panicked inside. But when he said that, it was like, yes, that is our truth. This is a lie. What I know it's what we see. It's a fact, but it's not truth. But I had been taught here that that was not how it was supposed to be. And whatever came from here would set the tone for our journey. We knew ahead. enough not to make an agreement with what we saw. That one defining moment sort of set the stage that we were not gonna accept this as truth. And went into the hospital April 25th of 2019, and my doctors told me then um, what I had was a very aggressive type of cancer. I had a tumor the size of a cantaloupe. 
Um, he said, the interesting thing is it's dead around the outer layers. So we understand um, by what we've seen that it's outgrown its um, blood supply. And we just looked at each other and we said, no, it did not outgrow its blood supply. We have been speaking every day over my body, death to whatever is there that is not of God and life to what is. And so um, the doctor sat down on my bed and he said, look, I'm just gonna be real honest with you. I think you probably have around four months to live. Um, we could attempt treatment, but I don't know that you could handle it. But I do, I am prepared. Um, we can go ahead and set up hospice care. I said, I, no, I'm not setting up hospice care. Um, we're gonna attempt treatment. And every day I would spend four and five hours just digging into the word. Every morning I would turn on praise and worship music and I would just worship. On into the journey, um, I had to face surgery. And my doctor had told me, uh, we're going to attempt surgery. The goal is a radical hysterectomy, and um, we may have to do a bowel resectioning and a colostomy bag and all these other things. And that day, I just looked at him and I said, okay, I said, you know what? This is in God's hands. He's my healer, and we're just going to leave it there. We're going to trust him with it, and we're going to go into surgery day. confident. And so we went in the morning of surgery, and I just said, joy comes today. Joy comes in the morning, and today is Joy's returning to our home. We go into the hospital, and my doctor comes in, and he said, you know what our goal is. You also know that when I open you up, I may have to abort mission and stitch you right back closed. And I just smiled at him, and I said, today's going to be a really good day. And he said, okay. <laughs> and so we went into surgery, and then about two and a half hours later, I was in recovery, and he came in, and he had a big smile on his face. And he said, you were right. Today was a really good day. Um, there was no need to take out any other organs, no need to resection your bowels, no need for a colostomy bag. We got it all. So the, lear the learning and the teaching we'd received here at Faith Life, we practically applied these things and we were fully persuaded. In January, I went in this January, 2021, for a PET scan. And as we're driving to get the PET scan, I looked at him and I said, I'm clean. And he said, yes, you are. And so we get there, I do the PET scan. I'm in this tunnel, you know, in the PET scan, you can't move. I'm sitting there and I'm laying there with my eyes closed, just praying, talking to the Lord. And I just saw this image. It's just like the Lord just allowed me to see just for a glimpse, this imagery of Jesus as my covering. And I thought, I know I'm clean because he's clean and he's my covering. And so I had total peace in that PET scan. We leave, we drive home and my phone rings as I'm pulling into our driveway and I'm thinking, this is the hospital. That's weird. I must have forgotten something. Or maybe they need to reschedule my next appointment. So I answer it, and it's my doctor, my oncologist. He said, what are you doing? I said, um, nothing. What are you doing? Why are you calling me? And he said, I know I'm seeing you on Monday for your follow-up to give you your results. And he said, but I had to call you today. And I said, okay. And he said, your scan is completely clean. And I said, yeah. And he said, no, I mean, your scan is completely clean. I said, yes, that's what we expected. And he thought it was kind of strange that we weren't, you know, Excited. jumping out of our skin. We were, but we expected that. So it wasn't this shock. And I said, remember what I told you when I left? And he said, yeah, you told me it would be good. He said, well, you, you were right. <laughs> and I said, yes. So I am 100% cancer free and clean. Praise Jesus. Praise God. <laughs> yeah. Stay in the truth, not based on what you feel, not based on what the facts are, not based on what the world says, but what is the truth? And the only truth, the only absolute truth is God's Word. Keep saying it, keep listening to it. Don't ever stop listening to the truth. We're living a good life. That's right. <laughs>
God will do for you what his word says he'll do. And before long, you'll be sharing your story, hopefully right here on Fixing the Money Thing. That's what we want for you. We desire to see you uh, fulfill God's kingdom principles in your life, to live them, to receive whatever corrections or uh, anything we need in our life. So we all have to be teachable. We all have to be loyal, loyal to the word of God and correctable to receive instruction. That's right. And the thing you have to remember, the foundation is God doesn't lie. That's right. These kingdom laws do not fail. The failure, we already say, we got to look at, the, at our end. Like if a light's not on, you know, make sure the switch is flipped on, right? Or the bulb's yes. good. You know, you don't just uh, call the phone or the electric company up and start yelling at them when the power's been on. It's on your end that, you know, someone didn't right. flip the switch or the bulb's burned out. Well, that's how it is in the kingdom. God has already turned the power on, so to speak. These laws govern how the power flows into the earth realm and how we operate within that authority. And that's why we have to learn the laws. And then we have to make a decision to stay with those. And loyalty, you know, God moves us into assignments to stretch us, to grow us, so we can pass the test and move on to greater and greater things, which we all want. And loyalty is required on that journey to ever reach the dreams you have that God placed in you. That's right. I'm so thankful for his careful, faithful instruction mm -hmm. because even when we miss it or we make a mistake, uh, something is in our life we don't know how to handle. God is there to gently correct us, to pull us back on target, to lead us by his spirit, to give us the instruction that we need because he wants us to get it and he wants us to get there to our destiny, to that promotion he has for us. So Gary, right. he's helping us along the way. It is, and it is a process. It is a process. Now, if we look at Joseph, we mentioned Joseph, mm -hmm. you know, you look at his story, how he was moved over to Egypt by his brothers, throwing him in a pit, right? And then he was in Potiphar's house. Uh, well, it just so happens later, of course, he ends up right under Pharaoh with an administrative plan. Well, all along, God had to move him, posture him, stretch him to be able to handle the destiny that God had for him. And so is so with you. You're going to, have to be faithful with the small things mm -hmm. to ever handle the big things. Yes. And this is uh, something not that popular in our, our society, but this is how it works. And so, you know, God will never lead you someplace, you always say, where your character cannot hold you. Mm -hmm.